How much protum can you earn from your totem? It sounds like a tongue twister, but I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the five different traits that influence the 5,555 totems that exist in the Upland Metaverse. I'm YK2012, founder of the Upland Guide. On this channel, you can learn everything you need to know about the Upland Metaverse, strategy, tips, tricks, fundamentals, and everything you need to know about life in Upland, protum, stem, and totems. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and tell your friends. Understanding these five traits are not only critical for you to understand how your individual totem will work, but also for comparing other totems. If you're looking to buy, sell, or trade a totem, the visual aspect has a coded meaning behind it, so it might look cool, but it might not be so valuable when compared with other totems. To learn more about totems and life in the Upland Metaverse, make sure to check out our YouTube playlist, which is linked in the upper right-hand corner and in the description below. Of the 5,555 totems, there are no two that are exactly the same. So when you're looking to understand how your totem works, if you end up buying a different one, it's going to work in a different fashion. I'm going to break down these five different traits, the life form, style, color, scale, and totem base, and all of these are mapped to different attributes, where the life form represents the output, the style, the input, color frequency, scale capacity, and totem base is the stamina. As I explain these different attributes, we'll, you will also gain a better understanding of what you need to do in order to earn more protum from your totem. To help me throughout this video, we're going to be looking at this totem, which is palm tree number 404. It's unclear if this is just an example or if this will exist within the Upland Metaverse. The first attribute, which you can't actually see in this image, is the scale. The scale represents the capacity of the totem. The capacity represents the amount of protum that your totem can hold before you have to go in and collect it. In order to generate protum, you're going to need to input a certain amount of protum at regular intervals in order to create additional protum for yourself. So you have to figure out when the right time to input that totem is in order to maximize the output. Once your totem has generated additional protum, you're going to need to collect that on a regular basis. And that is going to be defined by the capacity or the scale. From this graphic, we can see that there are nine different scale sizes ranging from micro to epic, and this will be seen on the Upland map itself. You place these on your properties just as you would a map asset because totems are map assets, and a micro totem will be a lot smaller than an epic totem, so you are going to need a larger property in order to place that epic totem on. So when looking at totems, it would make sense that a larger totem would have a larger capacity. Trait number two is the totem base. The totem base of this palm tree number 404 is a hexagon, and there are three additional shapes. We have pentagon, square, as well as circle, which is the rarest base. The base represents the stamina of your totem. As I mentioned, you have to input protum on regular intervals. The larger the stamina of your totem, the more flexibility you will have in the feeding schedule, and the more you will be able to delay any penalties for having missed a feeding time. If you're thinking these totems are great, all I need to do is feed protum to my totem at regular intervals, and I will get more protum. Well, it's possible, but there is a downside. As I mentioned, if you forget, there may be penalties on the totem's future yielding abilities. So the stamina is very important for you to be able to delay any of these negative consequences, assuming you are not feeding your totem at the optimal times. Trait number three is the color. There are seven different colors to totems, and this specific prom tree is clearly green. The color represents the frequency, which essentially means how often do you need to log in in order to feed your totem. There's a simple calculation that can be used to figure out exactly when you need to feed your totem. It isn't clear yet exactly what the frequencies are for each of these seven different traits, but you will be sure that all of the information will be up to date in the link in the upper right hand corner and the description below when all of the information is made available. Before I explain the exact calculation, you have to understand that totems work on a 30 day cycle. Upland will announce when the cycles will start and you will be able to activate somehow your totem in order to indicate that you are looking to feed it for that 30-day period in order to produce additional protum. Once you do that, you are going to want to adhere to the feeding schedule that you need to do for your specific totem, and the frequency is going to dictate how often you have to go and feed it. So let's say, for example, that your frequency is three days. That means that you're going to have to go in every three days in order to feed your totem. 
Upland also mentions that the optimum time within that period is the middle of that frequency. You can maximize the amount of protum that you are able to earn by feeding it at the optimum times. If you don't feed it at the optimum times, you will obviously be earning less than the maximum. And if you miss feedings altogether, refer back to what I mentioned about the stamina of your totem. The fourth trait is the style, which represents the input. There are seven different variations, and this specific palm tree is the elegant style. And this input represents the amount of protum that can be used to generate additional protum yield. Essentially, how much can you feed this totem at any given time? If you're multiplying the amount of protum that you put in by a certain factor to get the output, obviously the more you input given that exact same factor means that you're going to be getting more. So with rarer styles, you are able to input more protum and thus get more protum out. It is important to note that the amount of protum that you can feed your totem each day is constant. The fifth and final trait is the life form, which represents the output. There are 11 different types of life form, and not all of them have been revealed yet. The first two types of life form are palm trees and dragonflies. Previously, we spoke about the style and input trait, and here you can see this dotted blue line, which indicates the amount of protum that you can add on any given day is constant throughout the entire life cycle of that totem. The y-axis represents the protum amount, so your input will actually move that dotted line either up or down based on the rarity and how much input you can put in. On this graph, we can see the 11 different variants, but we do not know which one represents which type of life form. Once again, all these details will be revealed in the future, so make sure to check out the link in the description below to head over to our webpage and see the updated info. There are several different curves that we can look at, and if we look at this teal curve right here, we can see essentially that on any given day, if you input X amount of protum, you will get a constant multiple of that amount of protum. So if you are able to feed your totem exactly at the optimum time, and you make sure that you collect all of your protum on time before you reach the maximum capacity, you will be able to maximize the yield of your protum. And this is the easiest type of curve to understand. You have a constant input and a constant output. So what you do at each interval is going to remain the same. If you compare that to this red curve, you can see that at the very beginning, you're putting in a certain amount of totem, but you're actually getting an output which is less than what you put in. But as you can see over time and over the life cycle, it grows on an exponential basis, where towards the end of the cycle, you are earning a lot more protum compared to what you put in on that specific interval. Now with this, it's super important also to understand what your capacity is, because towards the beginning, you may not have to log in so regularly in order to collect all your protum. But as you reach the end of the life cycle, you're going to have to log in much more frequently because the capacity that you're able to hold will fill up a lot faster. I'm not going to go over all of the different curves in this video, but these are a couple of things that you really need to understand in order to figure out how exactly your totem is going to work. How much can you feed it? How frequently can you feed it? And how frequently are you going to have to come in and collect the protum that you've earned? Now, if this sounds complex, imagine owning more than one totem and trying to keep track of all of the different things that you have to do for each of the different totems, as each of them are a completely different entity and have their own schedules. I don't think that these are designed in a way that you are able to get 100% yield on your totem at each cycle. The way that these curves are built and the randomization of the traits will almost guarantee that at some point, if you want to get 100% yield on your totem, you're going to have to wake up in the middle of the night or several times in the middle of the night in order to collect your protum and reset your capacity or to feed your totem. I wouldn't get all worked up if you're unable to reach that 100% yield, but it's clear that there will be totems that are a lot more friendly and easier to understand than others. I hope the introduction to these different traits and totems really helps you to gain a better grasp of the concept of totems and how they will work. There are additional videos that you can watch to learn more about life in Upland, and make sure to continue following all of our content across our social media platforms as we continue to explain all of these new concepts that are coming into the metaverse.